Thank you, Speaker. Well, it gives me enormous pleasure to lead debate for the Labor opposition today on the petition of over 12,000 signatures Yay. against this government's ham-fisted new intercity fleet project, which sees billions of taxpayers' money uh, being spent by new trains from South Korea, which are not fit for purpose and absurdly do not fit the tracks. Shame. Blue Mountains, Newcastle, and Illawarra commuters desperately need a new train to replace the ageing V sets. But we should not be forced to settle for whatever cut price carriages this cheapskate government seeks to foist upon us. When I tabled this petition back in September, I challenged the Minister for Transport to debate me on this issue. So far, he has done ducked and weaved and chickened out at every opportunity, so I'm looking forward to him finally being here in the chamber and accounting for his incompetence, his wasteful spending, his indifference to the needs of commuters and his neglect of local manufacturing workers. But in truth, in truth, I have perhaps been a little unkind over the past 12 months to the Minister for Transport. Poor old Minister Constance has been unwilling and unable to address the concerns I have been raising because they are decisions which were made over his head and without his input. We know this because 12 months ago, when Ray Hadley interviewed Minister Constance on 2GB and asked the Minister whether the government knew the trains wouldn't fit the tracks, the Minister for Transport threw his predecessor under the bus. He he blamed Gladys. He blamed his boss and he told the world that it was all her fault. And so the farce that has unfolded since that interview 12 months ago has done nothing to give the Blue Mountains community any confidence that the Minister for Transport or the Premier herself know what they are doing. What other explanation exists for a government that buys new trains from South Korea that do not fit the tracks? What other explanation exists for a government which orders a new intercity fleet with rigid, uncomfortable seating when the customer expectation for comfortable, soft and reversible seating is well established? What other explanation exists for a government, Mr Speaker, which orders a train from overseas at a 25 per cent discount? Count when it should know, when it should have made some effort to find out that the cost of making those fat trains fit the tracks would blow out beyond any short-term discount for buying trains on the cheap from South Korea. Here we have a government that is so ideologically opposed to local manufacturing workers that it will waste billions of taxpayers' dollars on trains which don't fit and passengers don't want. We have a government which is so hell-bent on abolishing crucial railway workers' jobs that it will try to run these new trains in driver-only mode, putting the safety of passengers and train drivers at risk. The Minister for Transport will have a chance to respond in a moment, but for expedience's sake, I'm going to tell you what he's going to say. <laughs> will tell you that I want to keep running 40-year-old trains in the Blue Mountains. This is not true. Minister Constance will tell you that the Hyundai Rotem trains represent value for money for the New South Wales taxpayer. This is not true. No. Minister Constance will tell you that his department consulted with passengers and incorporated their feedback into the design for these new trains. This is not true. Minister Constance will tell you that these new trains are reliable and safe. This is not true. Minister Constance will tell you that he will not sack train guards on the new inner city lines. This is not true. Finally, Minister Constance will tell you that this is an investment in Blue Mountains line that is long overdue. And this is not true. What is true is that the Department of Transport is being forced by this government to scramble about making modifications to our tracks after the fact in order to accommodate these new trains which the New South Wales Liberals decided to buy on a whim without doing the proper research and without any analysis to ensure that they would fit. You forgot the tape measure, Minister. <laughs> Questions on notice, lodging freedom of information requests, writing to the minister, putting motions to this house, debating the minister day in, day out. I have, I have.
have talked to my local paper, my local radio, the ABC radio and Sydney Morning Herald about fat trains that don't fit the tracks. And still he cannot answer one simple question. Minister, what will it cost to widen the tracks, tunnels, platforms, sandstone cuttings and move trackside signalling equipment so that these fat trains can fit all the way to Lithgow? What will it cost, Minister, when you could have bought these new trains that were designed and built with local expertise that fit the tracks, that are fit for purpose as a long distance train and which would keep local manufacturing workers from regional New South Wales in good quality jobs for many years to come? What will the cost to the taxpayer be? Now is your chance, Andrew Constance. Just answer the question. Yeah. Thank you.